Welcome to Beal Science. We're in for a big treat today because right back there, we've got Mr. G from the Mr. G Science Show. He is a retired science teacher who travels the world and puts on these amazing science shows, and we're lucky enough to have him here. He's gonna show me all of his amazing demonstrations, especially the ones with lasers and light and sound. And then together, we're gonna show you how you can make these at home or for your students or for your class or for whatever it might be. So stick around, it's about to get wild here. The thing I love about Mr. G's setup is the simplicity. All you need is a speaker. You don't even have to have one this big or this elaborate. Just a speaker and a few other things and you've got your own laser light show. It sure goes really well. Great. It's awesome. Yeah? Is that yeah. good? Oh yeah, this is good. Great. Hey, you're going to need a laser to get this to work, of course, and some way to hold the laser steady. We're using a ring stand and a clamp because that's what we have in the lab, but you could use anything. Just get creative with it. And then, of course, you need something to fit over the speaker. But we're going to show you how to make that later on. You need tape to make this particular thing work. No base yet. No base, we don't get any. We don't get anything. And it has to do with the nature of the sound waves themselves. You need low frequency bass notes. Here's what we actually did. We made the laser beam so it was right at the mirror, and then it's reflecting out here to the screen. But it's as simple as this. The laser aimed at a mirror, and the sound is going to make that, that cloth vibrate, and the, the dot's going to move around. Got two lasers set up, same mirror, so whatever sound makes the mirror move, we'll be doing for both lasers, but then we have them aimed in different directions. We've just chosen to have one going to the wall and one going to the ceiling, just because because we're scientists and, and we're party animals. So we need we need everything we can get. <laughs> <laughs> Since we live in this century, we don't have chalkboards. We used to have chalkboards and have chalk dust to put in the laser beam because the light itself is, is invisible. The only way you can see these laser beams, and now I'm putting some dust in there, is to get some kind of particles that will reflect the light into your eye. That's why we can see it now, but the light itself you never would see. But if you can get it to go into your eye. And if two lasers is good, three has to be better.
some diffraction gratings that will get multiple images and we, if we move them around we get the images moving. And if you're wearing the diffraction grating glasses you'll see all these dots in, in three dimensions which is really quite cool. And you can also add your own little laser show just by moving your laser. <laughs> But now you'll get to just see the laser beams that are on the wall. Yes. And you're getting the multiple images coming from the diffraction gratings. If we just use one grating, it's still there, but it's not as many images because we just didn't add them all. So if you put those, if you put those in front of this while the music's playing, it, it should just be chaos. Yes, and it's. Now we're going to use a diffraction grating in front of the, the beam back here. Now we've got multiple. talk about those shapes a little later. Okay. Quick introduction to what sound is. Really low-tech sound is this. I vibrated my hand in air, created a sound wave. The air molecules bounce along. The trouble is you can't hear that because it's not fast enough. You need to have vibrations of at least 20 or 30 times a second. That's the lowest frequency, which is what this is, that you can hear. It also means if I could vibrate anything, I could make any sounds whatever, if I just know how to vibrate it just right. I can make music with like a cup. And the way I show that is with this little device called a rock it. It's connected to our sound source. And so now this little speaker is making sound, is making sound, is vibrating. So I can take it and stick it on the cup. Now the cup will vibrate to make sound. So that is again showing that whatever vibrates makes sound. If I take my Cheerios box, now we're getting sound from the Cheerios box. This is sticky, so it's physically going to make whatever it's stuck to vibrate. Sound isn't mysterious. It's the vibration in air, and that travels at 760 miles an hour. Now, obviously the laser light show with the music is pretty fantastic, but this is a science channel where we dive into the science and it's not just pretty shapes. There's some amazing things going on. In order to explain what's really happening, if the laser is shining on the mirror and the mirror moves sideways, that would make the laser dot go sideways. If the mirror is moving this way, it would make the laser dot go up and down. If they're doing exactly the same this way and this way, exactly the same, then we get a circle, or in this case we have sort of an oval shape. Now I'm going to go change the frequency so that we end up having a little different shape. We have a figure eight. Now what that means is that every time the mirror goes up and down, it means the mirror is moving back and forth twice. So the mirror is doing this twice every time it does this, and that makes the figure eight shape. And so it, essentially we could have something that makes all kinds of weird shapes, which the music does. And it's because the mirror is vibrating such intricate ways while the music plays. <laughs> uh. We want to look at the math, a little bit of the mathematics of it. So now let's pretend the mirror is going up and down. That would make the dot go up and down. And if I were to ask you to make a graph, yay math, where this is the vertical axis, but the horizontal axis is time, that would mean that the shape of that graph would be like so. And we call that a sine curve. We graph the horizontal motion with time going in the vertical direction. Then we would get another sine curve, another wavy curve like so, and the fact is when you have a sine curve of this type added at, to this sine curve vertically, added meaning they're happening at the same time, then we get our circle. For those of us nerds, 
We want all of this. This is all good. <laughs> what Glenn's going to show us here is that sometimes we don't get any movement on the lasers back there. Nothing happens. Right. And that's because of the frequency. And sometimes we get these really amazing shapes that are happening. So yeah. we've got a tone generator that um, he's going to adjust and we'll be able to see what that does with the laser beam. Only the low frequencies will cause the physical motion of the mirror. And that's because the, the physical motion of the light wave or the, the sound wave is big enough to move the mirror. Whereas for high frequencies, it'll move it, but it'll move it so little, we don't get to see the nice laser show. So I can't even hear that. Right, I can't either. That's, that's at what hertz? It's at 20 hertz. So this is, this is below what we're hearing. At 20 hertz, but, and it's moving. Right. But I can't hear that at all. Now it's up to 36 hertz. Now it's at 40, and now I can finally audible. start to hear a little bit of the audible bass. And as we go up past 40, now we're up to 50. Yes. <laughs> 60, 70, now we're up to 90. 90 hertz, 90 vibrations per second. Now we're up to 110. The shape on the wall is decreasing because it's no longer a big enough vibration physically moving the mirror. So our laser show is dependent on the music and, this, and the sound itself. Other than the laser, probably the most important component of this is the diaphragm that allows the mirror to move back and forth. So Mr. G is going to show us his inventive solution for this diaphragm. And you can get all this stuff right at your craft store. This is an embroidery hoop. It's made for stretching fabric, and we've just got it on a regular cotton t-shirt. And then go out and find some pieces of mirror. One thing we found out is that the mass of the mirror matters. We started cutting them down until we reached a mass that was under about a gram, and that seemed to be ideal. And then we just glued that in the very center of the embroidery hoop with the t-shirt. I put some Velcro and just stuck it directly to my speaker. <laughs> Who would have ever imagined you could have so much fun with lasers and science and embroidery hoops and mirrors and all of this good stuff, oh my. And we're not done with Mr. G. He's got more stuff to show us. So if you want to see more, there'll be a link down there and probably a video popping up on the screen here pretty soon. But remember the whole goal for all of this stuff is so that you will keep on learning.